Let's move over to Gary Cassidy. Gary, you had a question for Mike. Hi, Mike. Thank you for that. It was incredible insight. Um, I want to move away from that match, though, and ask, you know, that match, you your performance was held in an incredibly high regard. You've never been someone that's been criticised in the ring. I want to ask about the time the referee was the most criticised, the Montreal screw job. What would you have done personally in that situation? Yeah, um, that's, 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 that's an excellent question. I really don't know, to be honest with you. Um, at that time, you know, I felt I was very good friends with Brett. I had to run down in that match. I was supposed to be running down on that match, but it never got to that point. Um, at somewhere, I'll tell you, like probably in the beginning of that day, Brett had came up to me and me and Joey Morello were good, very good friends. And he was very good friends with Brett. We used to travel with Brett once in a while on the road too, me and Joey. And, uh, you know, me and Joey always had a thing like, hey, you know, when you swore on your mother, you were telling the truth, you know, like people swear on their kids. So, I mean, Brett came up to me that day because he knew I had to run in on that match. So he was very concerned. He knew something was going to go down. He knew something was going down and he felt it, but he didn't think they might do it in Montreal because he was in Montreal, in Canada. And Brett's always been a stand up guy, good family man. And here comes Shawn Michaels was the rise. And they seen that Shawn Michaels was going to be the top of this, you know, but Shawn didn't want to drop the strap to him at a certain point too, before this. So Brett came up to me that day and he said to me, he said, Hey, Mike, he was like, Coyote goes, um, they ask you to do anything. They ask you the office, anybody ask you to do anything during this match that I'm not aware of. And I said, Brett, I swear on my mother, nobody's asked me anything. You know, I said, I feel like something's going down because nobody's talking to me about a lot of stuff. What normally you would talk to you about a match. And I did see like Jerry Briscoe over on the side with Earl Hebner having their little chit, you know, chit chats far away in a corner somewhere, or trying to just, you know, a secret little meeting at times during the day. And then I definitely seen that little meeting before the match went out there. So I knew something was going down. And then, and I know Brett asked Earl Hebner the same thing too. And Earl said, I swear on my kids. No, nah, they didn't say anything, you know? He, and Brett told me, he had asked Earl, you know, and he said he swore on his kids. I said, well, I'm swearing on my mother. I said, they haven't said anything to me. And it's, it's a good thing. I don't know what I would have done, you know, but I was supposed to go out, run down, count a false finish, count, at least get to one. And behind me was Owen Hart. And he was supposed to slide in, grab me by my shirt and my, my back and my belt and throw me right through the second, third row. Well, we never got to that point, you know? And, um, so, I mean, and then I think right after that, after Owen throws me out, Sean super kicks Owen to get him out of the picture. So I come in, count one, two, and boom, Owen's right behind me. Shit cans me out of the ring, turns right into Sean Michaels super kick and it never got to that point. The only thing it did is I heard a bell and I'm looking through the curtain. Owen's behind me. He's going, what the fuck? What, what just happened? What just happened? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And then I'm like, I'm looking and there. Earl's like running right out the bomb, right out of the arena, right through the crowd. He's going right out the bomb. And there was a car waiting for him to take him out. Now I'm even more annoyed because that sounds like a, a much better ending than what we got. Yeah. Uh, I, had, <laughs> I had one final thing I wanted to ask. You know, we hear a lot about commentators saying that Vince McMahon's always in their ear and maybe overproducing them and stuff like that. How hands-on is he with the referees? And what was the relationship like even, you know, when you were backstage with Vince? My relationship with Vince was good. I mean, Vince had a lot of, I mean, confidence in me. He had a lot of confidence in me. Um, the only time he would get on me would be about another referee and say, hey, I need you to talk to these, this guy and talk to these referees and make sure this shit doesn't happen again, you know? Um, but as far as Vince, I had you know, a great business relationship with him and um, I had more of a relationship with Shane McMahon years ago, over the years. Uh, but my relationship with Vince was great backstage. And like I said, he had confidence in me. And it was the only time he would get on me 
would be about another referee not doing their job. As well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mike. It's an absolute pleasure listening to you. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it, Gary. Thanks. 